time had to happen, I suppose, where we had to talk about death. Um, but maybe not in the way you're expecting. Um, Jim Distortion doing a daily short for Distortion's Got Issues on YouTube. Um, have you noticed how when people die, be it famous or Sid from down the road, um, when somebody dies, they become flawless. They become somebody who um, was almost saint-like. Only good traits ever talked about. Uh, Jim Morrison said that death makes the angels of soul and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven's claws. Um, I think he's right. I think I think that you know you you have the likes of Lady Diana Spencer, you know, married to Prince Charles, and it all went wrong and everything turned to poo, and then um, you know basically she died in a tunnel under really dubious circumstances. But the point being now is that everything that is talked about her is not about her death. It's not about Dodie Fired. It's not about, you know, the dubious nature of where her children came from. It's about the saintlyhood of what she used to do. And quite rightly, she did some amazing things. You know, she main chari charities with her landmine charities where, you know, she tried to stop landmines because of the damage they caused after war's gone. Um, I remember... I remember when my grandfather died um, and he and I weren't close, but he died after my mother. So, we, you know, we had to do that. And I remember, you know, everyone saying nice things about him because he was a nice guy, you know, and that's the thing. Um, I also remember, uh, I'm not going to say names, okay. Somebody I knew died who was an asshole. They were just a terrible human being, cantankerous, violent, and also just, you know, somebody you would cross the street to avoid. Yeah, when they died, the main people in their lives who had coated them off the whole time were standing there at the guy's funeral lying about it. So why, how does that serve? If you're remembered nicely by everyone, then your faults are never looked at. Yeah, your, your actual core being is never explored. The person you actually were doesn't exist anymore. Um, you know, death you know, wipes us clean of all wrongdoings, if you like. And I'm not sure that that's right. I'm not sure that that should be something that, that should be celebrated. You know, you've got people in the world who are genuine heroes. Um, and the, the thought struck me, and I think I've got it. I watch so many YouTube documentaries and videos that sometimes that these permeate, and I can't remember where they're from. But, you know, you've only got heroes that are dead you know the real heroes that are alive aren't celebrated that much um case in point right i don't know if you know who this is right if you remember the falklands war if you're old enough for that there was a guy called colonel h jones and he was in the parachute regiment i think yeah in fact i know he was parachute regiment and he led a charge on an uh argentinian outpost um that basically swung the the war in our favour, and he was, he was, you know, he was an OBE, and he was an MBE, and he, you know, he was, a, he was an impressive guy, but when he got that Victoria Cross for dying in the field of battle, he became a hero, my argument is, he was a hero before he started that, you know, he joined the army, he selflessly went in and, and did, he made a decision, a lot of people um, who I know say things like, you know, just because you join the army doesn't entitle you to anything and you know it doesn't make you anything more it's your choice so you know that's fine and 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 you know i suppose that's true it is your choice to join the army but when you're defending freedom um for your government right or wrongly okay just take that as a blanket statement not as something we need to dig into because i'll contradict myself terribly but you know he made the decision to be a soldier yeah went into conflict um, did so much that he actually died in conflict, leading his men. Now, after the fact, some people did question his sanity on doing it, but the bare bones of the matter was he was brave enough, yeah, to lead a charge that swung the Falklands War in our favour. Okay, he was given a Victoria Cross and posthumously. So he had to die for then us to even know who he was. Um, I remember him because I was growing up then and I was worried about the Falklands. I remember that. Um, I've also got some friends who were fighting in the Falklands War that were damaged by it, you know, but carried on. And it, uh, I just wonder where the hero side of things comes from as well. Because that Colonel H. Jones, his son Rupert, 
became a brigadier um, and in 2012 led 9,000 British soldiers in Afghanistan. So ideally he has hero status too. In as much as that he, you know, he will put his life on the line and do with that. So is heroic nature on a genetic level? You know, do, does if you if your dad's a hero, are you going to be a hero? How much pressure was that guy? Was that Rupert on? You know, how much pressure did he have on his head to become this glorious leader like his father was? You know, that's a big cloud to be under. But it took his death, his father's death, Colonel H. Jones' death, for him to become a hero in the consciousness of the British public before they didn't know who he was. So is death a doorway to some kind of celebrity? You know, you're only important if you die doing it. That only makes it... What about, you know, what about ambulance drivers uh, and, you know, nurses and doctors who save lives every single day? It's what they do for a living and are superiorly underpaid for doing it in the NHS. Um, you know, how about people, you know, who... Acts of kindness, you know, acts of selflessness to people who are, you know, not in a position to help themselves... I, I think that, you know, heroicism, you know, shouldn't just be in death. You know, there, there should be there should be a recognition of people. And of course, see, there is, you know, people get awards from the Queen and do all that. But it only seems to be in the consciousness of people through the media spoon feeding you because the perception is to become a real hero. You've got to die first. Surely you should celebrate someone's life where they're still alive, where they can talk about it. And removing everyone's evils when they die doesn't serve a purpose. Obviously, you're not going to sit around and discuss what an asshole somebody was. You're going to look for the goodness in people. And I think that's the point that's been taken too far. When you die, somebody will always, yeah, remember the reality of you, but will skip over the bits that are contentious because they don't want to appear to be the person that's disparaging, the person who is bringing that person down. I think that's wrong. I just, I don't, you know, I don't really see... I think what I'm saying is, is I think you need a, a total coverage of the human being, yeah? Because sometimes it's the badness in people that makes you the hero. That Colonel H. Jones may well have been unhinged. He may have put people in danger, but he was celebrated after his death for that fact. So remember all of the situation around that, yeah? Running full head on into a machine gun is really quite stupid, yeah? But... If, you're, if you know the end result and the bigger picture and you're willing to die for that, that's heroism, I would have said. What, what we all have to understand, though, is when someone dies, how you accept that fact. And making them into a deity of sorts isn't the way it works. You know, look at, you know... All right, just touch on the side of religion for a minute. Religion is... Uh, Looking at a higher being who is all benevolent and all uh, encompassing and everywhere all at once. And Stephen Fry argues that if there is an overall controlling being, then how come children get bone cancer and die painfully? You know, how can that be right? How can it, death that is, come to such a young person so painfully if there is an all seeing, all benevolent God? Now, the juxtaposition argument is, is that if he's not the controller of all, then he is not, or she, uh, or whatever gender God identifies with, um, if they do not uh, control that painful death of that child, then they're not a God. Therefore, it's cyclical. You have to talk yourself around in a circle to understand belief in religion. So, yes, he is benevolent. And yes, he has greater plans for children in heaven. Who can that possibly have that? Who can possibly have a plan for a six-year-old child who has been taken from their parents, causing grief and devastation for the rest of their lives? What kind of God does that? What kind of God would take that? Right. So therefore, my belief system is there is no God. And I mean that. You know, that's my belief. Okay? And... It, also, have a look at the ramifications of religion, yeah? When you, when you die, yeah, you go to heaven and get rewarded for your life of goodness or punished for your life of badness. And maybe that is why people celebrate the goodness in people, hoping that God would hear you 
saying what a good person they were. So they go to heaven. Maybe people are desperately trying to cover up the bad sides of people so that God doesn't hear. But don't forget, God's everywhere. Sadly, I think that God is a social control. It's not something to put on a pedestal and worship. Um, my mother had a belief system. She died of multiple sclerosis. Um, but her belief system helped her through the pain. Can't argue with that. I'm not saying you shouldn't believe in something. I think everyone should believe in something. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in higher power. I do believe in, in, in lots of things about life. You know, it makes more sense to me where the Navajo Indians or, you know, American Indians as a whole worship the rocks, worship the ground, the earth, where they grew things and they fed their animals. You know, if you're going to worship anything, worship, you know, the things that nurture you, the things that create a nicer world for you to live in because you know life is complicated life is difficult and i've said this before life is painful yeah but when you have the good things and when you can see rationally and you understand yeah that you know you do die everyone does there's nothing you can do about that sooner or later you're going to die right and it would be reassuring to think that actually people did remember you in a favorable light and that makes people feel better about the fact they're going to die, which is why they transpose it onto other people who necessarily don't deserve it. But once you have died, what's the point of maligning anybody? What's the point of belittling anyone? Because then there's the fear that that may happen to you after you've gone where you no longer have control of what people think and say. Remember... You don't have control about what people think and say about you anyway, yeah? Someone famously said, yeah, that other people's perception of you or the way you're seen by other people is none of their business. Sadly, I don't remember who said that, but it's a damn fine thing to say. I don't care what people think of me, really. Obviously, I'd like to be liked. I'd like to be seen as someone who maybe is an intelligent level beyond a stump, someone who can maybe be a conduit for narrative, do it for conversation somebody who stirs in your brain something to talk about or even just think about when i die it would be wrong to say of me that i only did good because i've done some terribly bad things yeah i am not a saint but what i am now is a father and a husband who tries his best to do what he can to make sure that people around him are okay so I'm not sure that I'm not sure that there is there is a God, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure there isn't. Okay, but if you need to believe in that, that's fine. But remember, when you're singing the praises of someone you didn't like very much, ask yourself why you're doing that. Are you doing it to reassure yourself that people won't do it for you? It's a thought, isn't it? I'm not sure that I'm not sure that death gives everyone the right to be sainted. But I can guarantee you will die. So make the most of your life while you're here. And not necessarily at the expense of others. All right, I've talked too much today. I'll speak to you tomorrow.